the uh, for the introduction, Andrea, and it's my pleasure to introduce the Gecko device. Um, I'm Chris Walker, first kind sales director for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And I'd just like to give you a quick overview of the Gecko device. So the Gecko device is a small battery powered disposable device. It's the size of a wristwatch. It weighs 10 grams and um, it delivers a very small electrical pulse uh, between 27 and 54 milliamp pairs, depending on the setting to the common perineal nerve. And that nerve then activates the calf and foot muscle pumps. Um, by activating those, we get a blood flow return, venous blood flow return, arterial flow, and that's around 60% of the blood flow a patient would get if they're able to walk with, when a, a patient is unable to move. Next. So on the, uh, the picture of the device here, on the front of the device is a location marker line, and that helps to assist with the fitting of the gecko device. And that line goes over the head of the fibular bone, where the common perineal nerve is closest to the surface. There are two switches on the device where you can adjust to one of the 11 stimulation settings that's required to activate the nerve to instigate that muscle reaction. And there are two indicator lights on the front which flash every second a number of times to indicate the level or setting you are on. On the back of the device, there are three um, silicon hydrogel electrodes two positive and one negative, and it's the negative electrode which fits over the head of the fibula. So the device fits any size patient, um, regardless of whether they have edema or whether they be small or large, you just have to cover the head of the fibula with that negative electrode and have one of the positive electrodes contacting the skin to complete the circuit. The battery in the device lasts for up to 30 hours of continuous use. And at that point, the device is removed and disposed of in accordance to your own medical waste protocol. The device has uh, regulatory approvals. From a C marking perspective, those approvals include the prevention of venous thrombosis, thrombosis or DVT prophylaxis, increasing blood circulation, and the prevention and treatment of edema. So, about VTE, we'll cover VTE burden, we'll cover causes and we'll cover current prophylaxis or treatment methods. So VT is a uh, venous thromboembolism. In, um, in the Western world, this kills around one person every 37 seconds. So around 840,000 deaths annually. And in the UK, that's around 25,000 people a year that die of a VT-related complication. Hospital-acquired DVT or VT can exist in any care pathway and affect any high-risk patient. So there are three areas to this. Um, so thrombosis is caused either through stasis, through hypercoagulability, or through vessel wall injury. And the current treatment for VTE includes um, graduated embolic stockings or TED stockings to compress the limb, causing an increase in blood flow. These can be hard to fit and compliance is fairly low with them. Intermittent pneumatic compression devices or sleeves and foot impulse devices. These are cuffs that fit on the leg and inflate and deflate to move blood in the veins. Um, in stroke patients, these are, um, are, are sort of used mainly because of the CLOTS-3 study. And then of course, the first line therapy where possible is anticoagulation medication or drugs that prevent uh, clotting of the blood. Um, and sometimes these can be unpredictable through bleed risk. So for maternity-related VT prevention, um, prevention care for obstetrics-related VT shares the same or similar unmet need profile as post-stroke VT prevention, in that both therapy areas have a reluctance to overuse drugs because of bleed risk, and both share the same intermittent pneumatic compression device tolerance issues um, that are seen in some patients. So with regards to Barnsley Hospital NHS Foundation Trust, there's some real world data shared, uh, will be shared in this session that was generated in partnership with Dr. Mona Forsey, who's the consultant in obstetrics and gynecology at Barnsley Hospital Foundation Trust. 
And Dr. Fawzi was most of it motivated to do her uh, study by the post-stroke real-world data generated by Dr. Indira Natarajan. She recognised the need for an alternative mechanical antistasis intervention when standard of care couldn't be prescribed. And as such, embraced the opportunity to quantify the level of unmet need in her maternity unit and to determine whether the use of gecko um, would have a role in patients when low molecular weight heparin and or traditional mechanical compression IPC could not be prescribed. Let me just run a quick demonstration video showing the ease of use um, of Gecko in this simple video clip. You can see a picture of the device now going on the leg. So it fits just below the knee, covering the fibula head, and that's then delivering a gentle stimulation to the common perineal nerve, both the deep portion and superficial portion. That's activating the foot and calf muscle pumps. And as you can see, there's now venous blood returning back to the heart. Equally compelling is this ultrasound clip, just demonstrating when the gecko is switched off in a patient who's laying down. And in a second, you'll see the same ultrasound with the patient with the gecko device switched on. So you can see the improvement in arterial and venous uh, flow and velocity. How do we compare versus IPC? This is just a small study that was done at St. Bartholomew's Hospital in London. We tested um, the different IPC devices shown below and on pulses gecko. And it was purely a measurement in the amount of blood that was moved per minute in mils, in milliliters per minute, and also the velocity of that blood flow. As you can see, we move a significant amount of blood compared to IPC devices probably in relation to the fact we contract the calf muscle more frequently. Interestingly though, we move blood at the same velocity or similar velocity, which is deemed to be safe. So regarding obstetrics and VT clinical um, burden, pulmonary embolism in, in, that, in obstetrics is the leading cause of maternal death in the developed world. And pregnant patients are five times more likely to die from VT during pregnancy. In the UK, VT incidence is around one to two episodes per thousand patients, but accounts for 10% of all maternal deaths in the United States. NICE guidance, um, CG92 recommends use of low molecular weight heparin and or mechanical compression in high risk patients during childbirth. And in some circumstances, however, these options can be contraindicated. So here are some examples where standard of care cannot be prescribed um, with, with relation to IPC or to drugs, uh, where there's a high risk of bleeding or there's an impending need for delivery. Examples include postpartum hemorrhage, heavy bleeding after birth, low platelets, which can cause excessive bleeding, or severe preeclampsia, where there's a risk to kidneys and high blood clot risks. Also intrapartum during childbirth. So Barnsley's study uh, was a prospective observational study um, and the objective was to determine the level of unmet need in patients at high risk of VTE. And the use of gecko device in this unmet need population as effective and satisfactory when drugs or IPC could not be prescribed. The study recruited over 90 patients um, over a period of 17 months. And the gecko device was used for a maximum of 36 hours and that was one pair of gecko devices, so one device on each, of, on each leg. The study measured patient tolerance and the measurement of VT at 90 days, similar to the uh, audit conducted at the Royal Stoke Hospital um, as conducted and it was not an outcome. So this is the 90 patient cohort, as you can see how it breaks down. The vast majority were postpartum hemorrhage patients and the next large group was severe preeclampsia running all the way down to intrapartum at the bottom there where there were two patients. So as you can see, postpartum hemorrhage was the largest high risk group and more than half of these patients were prescribed the gecko device as the only method of blood clot prevention. The study um, illustrated or showed the need for an alternative VT prophylactic intervention in these high risk patients. And without the gecko device, these patients would have had no VT prophylaxis at all. As I mentioned earlier, the gecko device was used for a maximum of 36 hours. 
And in that time frame, it was reported as easy to fit, safe and well tolerated. Patients were more mobile as there were no wires or leads associated with IPC, which has to be plugged into the wall or electric supply, therefore reducing the VTUs further. The study um, determined the gecko device can be used to protect patients until it is safe to prescribe blood thinning drugs. From a health economics uh, perspective, the, the analysis showed the gecko device's cost saving. And within the NICE guidance, uh, MTG 19 from 2014, the estimated use of the gecko device in high risk maternity patients compared to no prophylaxis provide an average saving of around £337 per patient. With regards to the change of clinical practice at Barnsley, the gecko device is now in routine use at uh, NHS Barnsley Hospital. It is prescribed when pharmacological and IPC methods are contraindicated or impractical in line with the NICE guidance. And this now ensures all their high risk patients can now receive pregnancy related blood clot prevention where previously no mechanical prophylaxis could be prescribed. The NICE guidance recommends the use of the GECO device where drugs or IPC cannot be prescribed, and the Barnsley Hospital is now aligned to that NICE guidance. The uh, actual study here is available for download as a scientific poster, and please feel free to do so following this webinar. The Barnes and Real World data has influenced wider gecko adoption across other NHS maternity units. And our next guest speaker, Dr. Emma Stansfield uh, from Birmingham, will share her experience in both embedding gecko into their VT prevention care pathway, the internal stakeholder engagement in making the case for purchase of the gecko technology, and the practical aspects in adopting innovation. Also, the, the key support of uh, GNN was where it's provided in making this happen. I will now hand over to 